Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks Engineering. Today in this episode of Kerbal Engineering we will be showing off how you make a Buran with Energia rocket. As you know I've covered Buran in my previous video. It's a Soviet version of a space shuttle and I will be showing this in roughly three-ish times times acceleration how you build it and I'm looking for the correct components. I have clearly selected the wrong one, but uh, the idea is to use Mark III components together with a mod Cormorant Ironology. Uh, that's why I put it in the search field. And now I'm putting the forward reaction system and also we are putting the shuttle lifting body at the rear. Now the question which one to use. As you can see this one which I've put at this moment has a slanted uh, rear end which means it's more adapted to the shuttle rather than Buran. Buran is characteristic so so that Buran has uh, at 90 degrees uh, rear end so it looks like this actually and you can switch the textures to better correspond and then the, this rear thrusters are uh, for the OMS orbital maneuvering system then we get the RCS pods to help it maneuver and after a little bit of fiddling with the RCS pods I figured out it would be simplest if I just use gizmos and just stick it in there Great. Lift it a little bit up. I don't exactly know where these pods should be. I think that it should be slightly higher. But let's call it Space Plane, Buran Mark 1. If you're more interested uh, in the history of the Buran program, I suggest you check my other video where I'm actually flying it. And. Um, let me just now see the extend retracted. I'm putting the big rear flap, big ass body flap. That's the flap that will be used on the re entry to maintain stability at high speeds and provide some additional lift. Then we want to offset it a little bit so that it looks like a normal continuation of the orbiter body. Then what we want to do is uh, I'm putting shuttle and then we have a two. Uh, tail planes. We have a regular shuttle tail, big ass space plane tail plane. And this is actually with a split rudder. But when I press deploy on both of them, I believe I'm messing something up. Oh, and now looking back, I see that I could uh, actually deploy with uh, direction inverse. Okay, well, I didn't see that. So, so I got back to the big ass. Uh, tailplane fin. Um, in hindsight the other one might be a better choice but it is up to your personal preference. I mean then let's put the big S uh, delta wing. Let's just put and I'm putting uh, big S. You have big S double delta wing and big S delta wing. I think I'm gonna go with doubles. I think it provides a little bit a higher wing area and a little bit more lift. So let's put them up upwards. I'm trying to attach it to the sh shuttle lifting body because that's where it's supposed to go. And since I'm using symmetry, I had to flip back the tiles towards bottom part. Then let's put the um, let's put the elevons, which will help us steer. One thing to think about when we're thinking about in terms of Space Shuttle and Buran, those are not really planes. They are orbiters. They are not designed for... Um, they're not designed for flight. They're more designed for glide. So um, you should think about them as just big lumping flying bricks with some wings attached. That's pretty much it how you should and it that's pretty much how they control. So up on and re-entry uh, they control terribly. However, I mean with some fiddling you can actually make it run okay. Now okay, let's put this uh, airlock because I plan to put the docking port on top 
and I'm thinking what else could I add and I'm not really feeling what I should put add in addition but um, since I plan to use this Baron in my Interplanetary Voyage Series 2 uh, and giving it the task of delivering a payload of Spectrometron to my uh, Kerbin Orbital Station I'm just inspecting, by the way, uh, center of mass and center of lift. As you can see, they are not aligned, and that is a bit of a pickle, but uh, no matter. Uh, let's put the landing gear, and I plan to put the large landing gear, both front and back, just for stability reasons. And as you know, Buran, unlike Shuttle, had wheels of more or less equal sizes. So, and the front wheel was slanted a little bit further behind the crew cabin. On uh, While on the space shuttle, the front wheel was very much forwards and it was a smaller one. So when landed, additional downforce would be executed in terms of keeping the orbiter on the ground. So I'm not exactly sure if that's the reason, but at least that would be what's going on. Okay just adjusting how it looks and uh, let's port this shuttle in um, or actually let's go into the VAB and design our payload and this is like like I said station spectrometron part and these parts are actually uh, made in a mod station science which adds uh, meaning to orbital stations where you can perform experiments etc so as you can see this is our spectrometron which is our payload and I'm also attaching our RCS tanks because I fully intend to put uh, RCS thrusters on it to be able to well dock simply put uh, then we're putting the remote tech uh, reflectron short-range antenna so that we do have some uh, connectivity and also on top of that I'm planning to put some photovoltaic panels and just to make sure that we have some electric charge oh boy oh boy this is, looks just too darn big yeah I think if I just put some solar panels that should be enough to keep you the reflectron powered enough so let's uh, call this bad boy a sub assembly I want it to be attachable and it is attachable by its probe top uh, let's just put some SAS because uh, it will be easier to maneuver and then final thing we want to put the RCS thrusters and I'm using the RCS build aid to balance them so that basically uh, the craft is easy to dock okay station spectrometron mark one perfect so Let's save and continue and get back to our Buran orbiter in the space plane hangar. Okay. Perfect, here we go. And I have attached two uh, big, um, two big um, docking ports so I can undock this from the orbiter and actually fly it to the station. Now uh, it's a little bit too much extruded up so I want to sink the cargo itself a little bit down and clearly I have more than enough space to put it there so I was wondering what the hell am I doing why don't I just sink it downwards and then I realized well also the docking port on top provides it's also too high up so I should sink that one as well so yeah let's just sink it downwards a bit and we have plenty of space so actually I'm planning of sinking it way down somewhere along these lines and now I have to correct back the docking port and the probe so let me just pull that one a little bit up yeah perfect I think that's just about right okay great that being said let's strut this thing so it doesn't wobble like a wet noodle on ascent great let's see how it looks oh i can change the textures on this well, this is a nice li neat little feature okay uh, then uh, we want to be putting toggling the cargo bay doors putting them and also big ass body flap also more control on the flaps 
increasing and decreasing flap deflection, perfect. I might consider sinking in that large landing gear a little bit, somewhere along these lines. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, uh, and now let's add two chutes at the plane's rear because those will be using as drag chutes once we get landed on the uh, on the runway we want to be popping up the chutes and it doesn't matter if they clip or if they're not visible ultimately I would even prefer that they're not visible because they're supposed to be in that package anyway great they're set to drag chutes and let's just sink them a little bit in perfect Shuttle lifting body, next tank setup, it is monoprop tank and I'm just trying to find the correct look of it. Perfect, now let's switch back to the VAB. Um, I do want to retract the gear because shuttle and Buran are not starting with their gear extended. Once again filtering for the Cormoran parts and I want it to go to the seven to two to five meter tank for energy rocket and I'm gonna plan to put it somewhere at the shuttle orbiters center of mass which is correctly put then let's put the energias uh, fuel tank something along these lines perfect let's align it then we have the we have the engine cell Perfect, and I'm thinking, hold on, mm, I should put the boosters, which ones are the correct ones? Okay, I'm, I was just checking pictures beside for reference, and let's put the Energias Separatrons and the Hurricane Engines, okay, great, and I think think the actual energy was a little bit higher oh not that high hmm, another tank if I really want to replicate how the energy looks with the run I think it should go somewhere along these lines okay um, let's just correct the side boosters and I will plan to put them in symmetry and they will be released symmetrically as they were in my introductory video. So we'll release them two by two and we put them two here and two over there. Hold on, two here. Angle roughly 15 degrees. I want to maintain the same angle or five degrees. I want to maintain the same angle between the boosters. Somewhere along these lines, perfect. And obviously we have to check our staging. Well, this looks now like actually the real Buran Orbiter. Uh, we want to offset just a few things. Uh, let me just see. Then I want to be placing... Um, first fix the decouplers and I want to put decouplers in their own... Separatrons in their own stage. Great. Then let's strut the uh, nose of the orbiter to the rocket perfect and I'd say it's more or less time for a simulation run don't you think okay let's just flip it eastwards as it's supposed to be and I think that I should ultimately I'm going to want to put it in the middle of the platform, perfect. And then I want to be putting the launch clamps because otherwise this thing would probably flip over. I mean, very high likelihood of that happening. Okay, and launch clamps I want to release after the engines have spooled up because they're using liquid engines, so yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. I would say Cormorant Aeronology and then I realized I have forgotten the OMS engines which I won't fully intend to put at the craft's rear. Right. Two engines, great Separatrons and... Okay, 
and uh, decoupler fires and when the decouplers fire oh by the way I speaking of decouplers I have completely forgot the couplers for the boosters so let's put hydraulic detachment manifold okay and then we're gonna put you somewhere along these lines okay I just need to correct how it looks something like that great I think that the rocket is not correctly placed Oh, let's offset it a little bit. No, hold on. I'd rather have a fixed angle. I put it at them at 90 degrees and then I'll put it together with the separatrons or sorry, with the decouplers at the 15 degree angle as they should be. Okay, then we need to detach these two boosters as well. I hate being this imprecise, but then again, I mean, I'm, I really try to be right on the nose when it comes to that. 15 degrees, no, 5 degrees it should be. Yeah, this is the place. And now we put it at 90 degrees so that it attaches directly. Great. Okay, obviously we have to check the staging. I just want to quickly make sure that my staging is correct. So, sep okay, when the decouplers fire, they will be firing two by two and I want the separatrons to be firing at the same time when the decouplers fire because they will help separate the rocket or the boosters from the main rocket okay okay something like that I think that should be about right so I think it's about time we actually simulate and test this orbiter on the sand shall we and engine lights on and throttle to max hit it and we have liftoff Jeb, Bill and Bob testing the Buran Orbiter a craft that has made its famous single voyage in the history of mankind for the glory of the Soviet Union well Sadly, once it got back, there was no more Soviet Union for it to perform services for. Well, but nevertheless, it was an amazing accomplishment for the advancement of the space program. And although the sad part is that, well, it was technically a little bit superior to the space shuttle, but it never saw any action. The good news, the good part about it is that they didn't see action news because it was originally intended for military use, but I'm pretty sure that if it stayed somewhere down the line it would have been used for the space and exploration. Hopefully. Okay, getting to the orbit and everything seems to be doing fine. Detaching the first set of boosters from Energia and then the second set of boosters and then firing up once again Energia's uh, main engine remember this is just a simulation a test to show if all of the systems are working correctly and it seems that they are for now so overall i'm pretty happy with the result and you will be see this guy flying uh, hopefully payload into the orbit in our um, interplanetary voyage series i don't know episode two three i have no idea but somewhere along these lines. For now we're making sure that we get the apoapsis right around 100 kilometers performing the roll. I've already mentioned this but the main difference between Buran Orbiter and the Space Shuttle is that the Shuttle had its own boosters which it was using to well during the takeoff while Buran was mainly just hitching a ride on top of Energia rocket and also uh, shuttle had two solid fuel boosters with a tank and it was using its own engines while Buran ha was riding on top of Energia rocket which had only liquid fuel engines even the boosters were liquid fuel so it was a little bit pricier endeavor than the shuttle, that's for sure, although shuttle was not, not a cheap thing by any means. Okay, getting close to our burn. 
kicking the gas and my rocket wanted to pitch up obviously because uh, well the center of mass and the center of thrust are slightly offset which I guess makes sense if you have like an orbiter strapped to your back okay getting to 44 I wanted to disconnect and test the monoprop engines like I mentioned this is just a test so we don't really need to do all the things that are intended but um, okay and let us just perform okay so our monoprop engines are working OMS pods are okay and we have roughly 607 meters per second that should hopefully be enough to perform the docking and also to uh, do the rendezvous with the space station and hopefully now let's test the payload if it works let's move it out of the shuttle bay and switching to it and no connection well ladies and gentlemen I have forgot to actually put a relay on the Buran well no matter I'll do it in the episode when we will be testing until then, thank you very much for watching, like if you like, hit subscribe for more KSP content, and thank you very much for watching, this is Gromforks, signing off.